Hi, this is Lynn Twyman with Courage Network, and thank you for joining us. Most of us at one time or another, looking back on our lives, have said to ourselves, I wish I had known. I have with us Tony Gaskins, Jr., author and motivational speaker who was featured on both Oprah and Tyra Banks shows. He tackles some of these I wish I had known topics in his book, What Daddy Should Have Told His Little Girl. Tony, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Tony, what inspired you to write What Daddy Should Have Told His Little Girl? Well, I had lived through a lot of drama with relationships, learning how to become a man and, you know, what love was and what relationships were. And I had a close friend that kind of put the idea in my mind and the inspiration was my mother and my sister seeing all that they were going through, you know, with men, with their abuse and things and realizing that I had been the man that they were suffering from. And so I just took all of my insight and understanding from my mistakes and put it into a book, hoping that, you know, women could read it and, you know, really sit with it and spend time with it and read it over and over and, you know, get it in their spirits to where they wouldn't have to fall for all the games that the women that I had hurt fell for. That took a lot of courage to do that, I'm sure. Right. It really did. It It was tough. Now, Tony, in your book, you talk about all different types of topics, celibacy, another chapter you mention, can guys and girls be just friends? And one of the chapters of your book is titled, Why Do Men Physically Abuse Women? What's going on inside the mind of some men that abuse? Can you talk about a few reasons why men abuse? From my experience and my study, there are several reasons, but mostly a lot of times I see that more so than, than the learned behavior of seeing it, seeing someone else do it, it just comes from a lack of knowledge. And men lack the cognitive skills that women possess. The average woman speaks 25,000 words a day, whereas the average man speaks 12,000 words a day. Here you have two people trying to communicate, and the guy is used to handling his problems one way, and a woman is used to handling her problems another way. You have this, this broken individual who, do, who doesn't know what it is to be a man, who doesn't know what a relationship really is. It feels like that manhood is determined by how strong you are, how many muscles you got, you know, how tough you are, and get inside of a situation and a relationship to where now he's expected to communicate articulately and use words to express himself, when he doesn't have that, he becomes physically abusive. It happens so often, and subconsciously, if you've seen it, then you're more susceptible to this behavior because it's in your subconscious mind, and you saw issues and problems dealt with this way. Another reason comes from suppressed rage, being bullied growing up, being soft and to where that you didn't really stand up for yourself, and now finally you're with a woman that you can overpower. So it's it's many reasons that go into it, but it all stems from just a brokenness and a lack of knowledge and insecurities. And you touched on some really good points there. You mentioned lack of knowledge, insecurities. You also mentioned earlier in our conversation that you used to be that man that was abusive. And, you know, you admit that in your book. What particular point in your life did this start for you? And at what point did you identify it, and how did you overcome it? For me, it was in college. I was a college athlete, and I was dating another college athlete, and we were two total opposites. She liked to club, very outgoing, cursed, she smoked, she drank, she was Muslim. And me, on the other hand, I was Christian. I didn't curse, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, and I didn't like the club. So we were two totally opposites. And it just started out as just being, you know, like best friends, like brother and sister, and kind of just really, really close, kind of like what we was calling ourselves, you know, hey, we just brother and sister. Almost me playing the friend role. Sometimes a guy plays the friend role to get a woman to drop her guard. Started off lust and lies, manipulation, and after a while we became an item you know we were a couple and then I began trying to change her to to make her fit me make her be who I was get her to think like I think and live like I live and I didn't realize at the time you know being 19 20 years old that you can't change another human being all you can do is change yourself and so trying to control completely control the situation normally when you 
try to do that, you end up losing control. And when you lose control, when that person is being themselves, they get drunk you know, and it upsets you or they go out to a club and it upsets you or they're being flirtatious or just outgoing personality and it upsets you. Those things, it sends you into a rage. You've been trying to control it. In my case, it sent me into a rage. I was just very upset, very angry, and it got to a point that I didn't want to scream. I didn't want to cry. And so I got physical. I became physical, and that is how I expressed myself. On the other hand, I saw it growing up. I saw aunts and cousins and guys beating up girls in school. and So it was in your subconscious mind. I had teammates that talked about how they abused their girlfriends and where to hit them at so no one knows. So all this is in your subconscious mind, and I find myself in this place to where I don't have the words, and I'm just so angry. I became abusive. And after it's over, you feel bad about it. You know it's not you. You're very remorseful. But with behaviors, it either has to be reinforced or ignored or stopped. And she would reinforce that behavior for whatever reason. I believe she saw abuse in her home and her sisters. I remember her having stories about her sisters being choked and abused. And so in her mind, subconsciously, she thought that was a part of love also. Here you have two individuals that are just total opposites, and neither one of us had an understanding of what love was. And so I was abusive, and she would reinforce the behavior. And when you reinforce the behavior, it increases it. It probably would happen once a month for about a year. After that, I came to a point to where I understood that this wasn't who I wanted to be. You know, I didn't want to be loved because someone feared me. I didn't want to be with a person that it was just so toxic. I knew love wasn't supposed to feel like that, but I didn't necessarily know how to get it. And so I decided to leave the relationship because she wasn't threatening to leave. She wasn't trying to leave. I never tried to get her to stay there. And so I just felt like if I didn't leave, if one of us didn't, you know, leave, something very bad would happen. And I just kind of packed up and, and, and separated ourselves. Tony, a lot of men and women that are abusive don't even get to the point that you came to, which was a point of realization and actually moving on to change your situation and to become a better person. So that's the real inspirational part or side to your story. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that takes a lot of courage and strength for anybody to do that. Thank you. Thank you. What can women do? to protect themselves from abuse? And what can men do to protect themselves from abuse? Like they say, knowledge is power. I definitely recommend uh, reading books like what Daddy should have told his little girl, like the five love languages. Books like that that teach you what love is, how to love, so you know what to expect. Don't go off what you've seen in your home growing up or around you, but understand Corinthians 13 what a relationship really is. And so therefore, when you go into it, as soon as you see signs that don't fit inside of what you know love is, you're able to back away. You know, you're able to let go. You're able to recognize and realize that, hey, this isn't what love is, and I can't accept anything less. And you, you want to make sure that, that your partner, you know, that you all are equally yoked and that they are seeking that same knowledge and wisdom and, and understanding of the dynamics of love. So basically it's preparation, taking preventative measures, steps to get yourself in a place to where you can enter into a relationship healthy and build a healthy foundation, friendship and trust and understanding instead of coming in built on lust and lies, and deception and manipulation and just a complete misunderstanding of what it's all supposed to be like. Tony, as a motivational speaker, one of the topics you talk especially about are the risk of young men and women dating too early, what makes a real relationship, and the importance of completing yourself and not waiting for someone else to complete you. Explain your message and the reason for your focus on young people. Well, basically, because that's where studies show that women in the ages 20 to 24 are most susceptible to domestic violence because it's that age group to where relationships in that college range to where they start to get serious. That's the age I was. That's the age Chris Brown and Rihanna were. It's that age group to where you want to start getting serious in relationships, but you don't know what you're getting into. You don't even know what it consists of or anything about it. And so that's where a lot of abuse occurs. Um, it, it occurs later ages, but I prefer an ounce of 
prevention instead of a pound of cure. So I, I focus on the young people. Your body naturally desires someone to be with, a companionship, you know, a lover from, from a young age. And it's just that natural pull because of our place on earth to reproduce and come together. And so I, I speak to them because it's very important. If you go into it the wrong way, you're not able to exit the right way or come through it, it, it could scar you and damage you for life. And so it's very important that, that we reach the young people. Even nowadays, younger than that, middle school and high school, young women are being abused at that young of age. What advice do you give to those who are in abusive relationships, and what advice do you give to abusers? Well, if you're being abused, especially if it's a woman, you definitely want to speak up. And whether it's the police, whether it's a pastor, your father, your brother, your best friend, because a lot of times what the victim doesn't understand about the offender is that the offender is also a victim. They're a victim of what they saw or the abuse that they suffered through life. And really they're just a scared person and they're acting out of fear. They're acting out of inadequacy and insecurities. And so to bring someone in, it could change their life. But a lot of times the victim gets tricked to believe that this person abusing them is just this big bad wolf and so tough when actually that's a scared boy. He's a little boy in his heart. He's just basically throwing temper tantrums, except now he's a lot bigger and stronger, and them temper tantrums are, are really hurting people. So love yourself enough to call the police, call someone in, and also love yourself enough to let them go so they can grow. Because very rarely does a man abuse a woman and then heal from it and overcome it and not abuse that woman again. You know, you form a bond with that person, and if that's the, the language that you all speak to, one another is abuse, then it kind of remains the same. You know, it becomes your predominant language, and that person needs to come out of that relationship and find something new, find who they are, both parties, and, and grow. So, you know, be strong enough to just stand up and leave. And if you're an abuser, understand that that's not communication and that it doesn't make you tough. If you're a man, it doesn't make you a man by imposing your will on someone. It doesn't make you big and macho or a leader. The leaders, the head, are servants. They're servants, not dictators. And so you have to understand that the greatest strength is gentleness, being man enough to speak your mind, to articulate your feelings, to express yourself. And if you can't, to, to sit down or to walk away humbly. And even if a woman is provoking you, she's screaming and yelling and cursing and she hits you, be man enough to understand that you're stronger than her and you're the stronger person and, and be the bigger person and realize that, you know, being a man is having respect and being a noble individual. It's easy to hit. It's easy to go off the handle, but it's much harder to walk away, to bite your tongue, to be the bigger person. And that's what really makes you a man. So, so you have to embrace that and understand what manhood or womanhood is all about. For those that are considering leaving abusive situations, make sure that you have a safety plan because it's really important that you know where you're going to go and you know who will be able to help you, that you have a game plan in place. If there's anybody that's listening that wants resources on safety planning, there's information on the Courage Network website and other resources available on the web as well. So, Tony, you've been just absolutely phenomenal with helping our audience understand abuse and the perspective. I appreciate the work that you're doing in the community, taking your own experience and just sharing it with other people, hopefully to save some lives. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Tony, in closing up, how can folks reach you? I can be reached very easily through my website, TonyGaskins.com. Um, you just go to the contact us page. It comes directly to my email. So that's the best way. And also from there, you can follow me on Twitter, at Tony Gaskins, or connect with me on Facebook. So I'm very easily accessible. Thanks again, Tony. And again, the site is www.TonyGaskins.com. I encourage you to visit the site and learn more about Tony's current work and events that he is hosting to help the community learn more about domestic violence and other issues that are affecting our communities. For our listeners, thank you for joining us. This is Lynn Twyman with Courage Network. Our website is www.couragenetwork.com, where we're building courage by working together. Take care.